So D5 has just put out a crazy update with a bunch of AI features which you need to learn how to implement in your architecture rendering workflow by watching the full video all the way to the end. So first of all, I will show you the AI PBR material snap. So right here, I have a scene. And for example, I see a reference image in Pinterest or anywhere online, and I want to apply a certain material or a certain texture onto our project. Now that is super easy. We can do that just by going to assets. And then right here at the materials tab, you can go to the AI material snap. And once you click here, you can just go ahead and upload an image. Uh, which you would like to basically upload onto your workflow. So we can basically go ahead and specify the wall or the material that we want to generate here. So for example, we can choose this one and then we can also generate a displacement map for it. And then we can just click generate and in just a few seconds, we'll have the result ready for us to either add it onto our own material library or just straight apply it to our project. So this is the material that was generated. And now we can either click here to add it to local, which we will do in just a second. And uh, while this loads up, once it's done, you can basically go here at the assets and go to the local library and you will see that we will have this added in, or we can also just pick it. And for example, apply it straight to this wall. And in just a second, now you can see that this material has been applied to uh, the actual uh, walls that we have here. So we can go ahead and make this tri planner and then we can also tweak the size of it or anything else uh, which we might need in order for it to uh, fit the scene here. So pretty easy to do and uh, very self-explanatory in order to replicate this. Now we're gonna try this, for example, with another material here uh, in this wall, for example. So what we will do is we'll go once again at assets, we are going to go to the material tab, we can go AI material snap, and I'm gonna go ahead and upload a completely different image now. This is this travertine wall, and let's see how this actually replicates the travertine material right onto our D5 tab. So let's select this and let's click generate. So all of these that I'm actually selecting or, and uploading are images online that I'm taking screenshots off and basically uploading it, uh, which is, in my opinion, uh, one of the easiest ways to make sure that you reference images and your actual project uh, resemble what you started out as an initial concept. Okay, so once this is done, as you can see now, um, not only can we add this to the library or immediately apply it to a project, you can see that there are some recommendations of similar materials that we can already find in the um, actual D5 material library if this doesn't fit. So let's just do this once again, just for demonstration purposes, and then we can just apply it there uh, pretty easily. And then uh, one more thing that we're going to do with this one as well, we can also uh, completely change the actual size of it. So we're gonna keep it triplanar. And then as you can see now, we can change the size of it or modify it any type of way that we want this to look. We could also probably lower the roughness for this to reflect more or delete the roughness map completely if that's what we actually want here. Uh, ambient occlusion, we can fix that as well. And then we can make it more specular in order to uh, actually uh, reflect more or anything like that. So this is the AI material snap, which I think is super useful. Now we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, so now we have another scene here, which is very mountainous and it is landscape heavy. Now, uh, one of the things that really, really is helpful for especially exterior scenes here uh, in D5 now with this update is this new feature called AI Agent. Okay, so what we can do here with this AI Agent is pretty simple. Now, we can basically go here and as you can see, it says, Hi there, I'm an AI Agent, your intelligent design assistant here to help you work smarter and faster. And as of now, this is very, very useful, especially for uh, like gardens and other landscaping uh, related projects. However, I think this is going to evolve in something which is gonna be great and, and just insanely high leverage for architects. So to put this into test, I'm going to type in, uh, generate a flower bed in Switzerland a blue palette ideal for spring season right so this would be our prompt we're giving it some context that way the actual generation is a lot more accurate and then we're going to click send here and the ai agent is going to have something ready for us in just a second okay so it says i'm curious about the water conditions do you envision a wet or dry environment for your flower bed i would say dry environment 
And then also, could you tell me about the light conditions at the location? Are you talking full sun, partial shade or mostly shaded? I would say partial shade, right? So uh, the AI, if it doesn't have enough context or enough information, is just not going to generate something which is mid. As you can see, it's asking questions to actually get the exact idea of what would fit well in this project. Okay, so as you can see now, it generated uh, the name of the plans, the plans details, habits, colors, and you can see all of these have different categories. However, what I will do now is that I will trust the AI for this and then we can just click auto scatter and then we can select the area on which we want the scattered. We're going to click there and then we're going to click create. And as you can see, AI in just a second is automatically going to generate a landscape which fits the environment and also just saves a lot of time with trial and error, which otherwise would take us at least half an hour to a full hour uh, from my personal experiences of doing this kind of stuff. Not only the part of scattering, because that is mostly automated these days, even the part of testing out and choosing the right landscape to fit, uh, which honestly is a weakness of mine since I'm not too familiar with um, a lot of the landscaping of different zones and climates. This just automates that and it would help me a lot to make the projects even more realistic and add even more of the right context, right? So even after all of this is updating all of the assets that uh, I've imported in just a second, you will see that. Uh, what you will notice is that even after all of these are actually there, we will be able to modify how often we want a certain type of vegetation to be there. We can add effects on top of it. Um, and all of these have little sub areas. And as you can see, now this is fully, fully, fully updated for us. So it added different zones. And honestly, this is just great in terms of how fast this is done. Now, maybe this is too large of an area for a flower bed, but actually not really. As you can see here, it even created the pathways by itself to walk around, which I'm actually not sure how it's done that even in this area. It's just so, so, so good. And it just gets me so excited to go and render as many projects and test this out. Some other features have been introduced to D5 in terms of the perspectives, composition, and camera settings. So first of all, we have a parallel view, which as you can see, it's super useful for diagrams and it just makes isometric drawings or diagrams a lot easier to create. Um, honestly, pretty accurate. And I think this is very useful and it helps visualization in terms of architecture. However, one other very cool feature is that if you go to camera and now let's just fix it back to uh, perspective, we can go to camera and then we can go to align and then in just a second, you will be able to see that if we just click on a surface, the camera will be aligned parallel to that surface. So I'm going to click on this wall. And now, as you can see, the camera is automatically aligned to that. I mean, how fast, easy and more accurate does this make the composition? I think this is a great feature and a great innovation in terms of rendering software, because I don't think any other uh, rendering software is doing what D5 is doing as of now in terms of development. The next update, which we will check out is the advanced brush. So if we click on the advanced brush and then if we just add some plants, so uh, let's just go here, I think. So I'm going to choose just uh, some random shrubs just for demonstration here. Uh, I want to make this quick and not drag it too long. OK, so for example, with this uh, tool, now we have a lot more freedom in terms of being able to uh, paint plants, adjust density and a lot more stuff. So, for example, we can basically just uh, draw a shape like this. And then once we let go in just a second, you will see that this is automatically painted there. And then we can also erase. So for example, we can just take this part off. As you can see, this is so easy. It's just like painting the brush tool before wasn't as advanced and it wasn't and it was more like model or texture dependent. Now you can see that it is a lot quicker and allows you to adjust your landscape a lot easier. OK, so another very cool feature is being able to add scattering only in the edges of a model or a material. So we're going to go here at scattering. We're going to select a material so we can either select this one or we could select even something larger. But let's go for this one as of now. We're going to click create scatter. We're going to wait a second and then we're going to add a custom divide. So it will be just the edges. Then let's go to adding the assets. We're going to go to leave and then let's just 
uh, select a few. So we could select uh, these which have a more autumn look. So we could select this, 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 this. And then uh, once we go back to the scatter, you're going to be able that in just a second, we can click on here in the area, we can select the edge width on how much we want it to uh, be wide in terms of where it's shown. We could also add the erosion on um, and then also the edge erosion range and then also the blur. So how sharp you want the lines of where this scatter, how sharp you want them to be. Now we can add more density here as always. We can also make this uh, random scaling. So we can increase the random scaling, random rotation. Uh, we could leave it uh, vertical. Now what we can do is we could probably just uh, leave this as the highest probability of occurrence, which means that this is the one that's gonna appear the most often in the scattering. And then we can also increase its scale, right? So we're gonna increase the edge width here for that to be uh, viewable. Let's lower the scaling to like, uh, something like this and then as you can see now we have leaves here on the side of the road this is very useful when we want to add something like leaves or some sort of other vegetation or maybe even rock another very cool feature that d5 has added is that if you go ahead and you want to go and create a video walkthrough and let's choose some sort of a twist flyover uh, template we can basically choose this and then what now uh, D5 allows you to do is that you can add a camera target that way this will always be in the focus of the camera and it is locked throughout the whole movement and now if we press preview you will see that the center of the whole animation will be uh, what we have selected as the target camera or even if we add a more dramatic movement so we can just delete this we can go and choose like a 360 pan now you can see how uh, you can see how this looks before we add the locking. It's all over the place. However, if we go over here, we can basically just choose the camera target. We can keep it locked right to the point of emphasis. And as you can see now, this is the center of um, the uh, video walkthrough. And then something else that D5 has added is basically the custom pathways, which are very useful for streetscapes, parks, etc. So if you go here at the path tools, we're gonna to go to custom paths and then we're gonna click on the nose. Basically, we are going to click on where we want this to be placed. So we're gonna click around the road and I'm just gonna use some sort of test here with uh, street lights, for example. So we're gonna go and add content. Uh, let's add, for example, um, this street light and then we can add um, a trash can as well here in this path um, in just a second we're gonna click done and this will be generated and now just like any other scattering tool we can also increase its density we can also drop it all to the ground uh, we can obviously tweak the path that it went to let's get just a little bit closer so now you can see that these are dropped to the ground here and then obviously just like with any other uh, scattering tool the pathway here we can also tweak the scaling we can make these a lot bigger we can add some rotation if you wanted to uh, we can drop them to the ground normal vertical or whatever kind of modification that you want to make once again this is super useful for landscaping in parks streetscapes etc now this is the new d5 update i personally think that this is changing architecture workflows forever and if you want to check it out yourself you can click the link in the description and if you want to see a free crash course of d5 make sure to go ahead and watch the video right here